Violent collision kills two people outside Tampa International Airport. An alleged road rage attack rips three families apart. Tonight, we're learning about the boys who were killed. Prosecutors are going to pursue charges against people who are texting while driving. That's right, this DUI and murder suspect could get life in prison if convicted. You don't think it can happen to you. It can happen to you within seconds, a blink of an eye. When you take your eyes off the road for just seconds, when you're driving your car, oh, yes, it can happen to you. See, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. When the sands of time will run out within your hourglass. He was a victim of a distracted driver hitting the road while riding his motorcycle going 65 miles per hour. He nearly lost his life. Now on a crusade to help save lives and prevent someone else from becoming a victim, the creator of DistractedDriversBusted.com and now the host of this podcast is Howard Drescher. All right, welcome to Distracted Drivers Busted. Com, the podcast show. I am your host, Howard Drescher, the creator of DistractedDriversBusted.com. And of course, now this podcast show. Oh, man. It has been eight days since I did my last show. Wow. I It is hard to believe that it has been eight days since I did my last podcast show. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to DistractedDriversBusted.com, the podcast show. You can follow me on Twitter at DistractedDBTV, at DistractedDBTV, and of course on Facebook, it's DistractedDB. And you can get the shows on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Google Podcasts. Just type in the keyword DistractedDB. So over the last eight days, I have been watching, I have been formulating a plan, and whoa, I have to tell you that I have been watching what's going on. From DUI crashes, arrest, to Tiger Woods' uh, notice of basically what has happened on what he did, how come he crashed, the reason why he crashed. At first, the police wasn't going to let it go. They weren't going to release it unless we ask um, or we get his permission to say it's okay to release it. But if that was you or me, it would have been released. In minutes. So it was released today or last night, I should say, as I'm recording the show here um, at 9 p.m. tonight or last night. So basically, I'm a, you know, I'm recording it. Uh, but I have to tell you that it was released and basically they said he was going double the speed limit, which was roughly around 80 miles an hour, crossing over a medium strip of freeway so of oncoming traffic he would have wiped out somebody and yet uh speeding that's all no potential no no uh real formal charges coming up on him but you know good for him uh glad he's alive uh maybe he can get back on the golf link soon somehow some way i don't know but we have late breaking news right here um i guess i could say as i'm recording this Five minutes before I hit this, I went to my Twitter account, and this is a story that I got from CBS2 in L.A., late breaking news, kind of surprising me because I've talked about this for the last three shows. The last three shows I have talked about this and the things that I have indicated, and if you believe, remember, in my last show or the show prior, I kind of nailed down the dad who went ahead and had that 17-year-old uh, with a Lamborghini that ended up killing um, the 32-year-old woman, Monique Munoz, uh, and he doesn't even recollect crashing into the girl or to the young woman, and it just surprises me. Again, late-breaking news, and I'm getting this from CBS in CBS in LA, Channel 2 slash KCAL 9, and I appreciate this. I don't have any audio yet, but according to this, they sent out on the Twitter uh, just a little bit ago, the teen charged in a fatal West, in West LA 
Lamborghini crash that killed Monique Munoz. Now, the 17-year-old has been charged. Okay. He has been charged or accused of hitting and killing the 32-year-old woman back in February. We all knew that. I harped on it for the last three shows. And matter of fact, that one of the shows, I sat here and I gave a rant for about 10 minutes. 10 minutes, I gave a rant in regards to what should and should not happen. And I indicated, and I'm not saying I'm going to take credit for it because I'm not going to, but I indicated that to me what should happen is that the district attorney should step up, don't placate to the fact that that dad is a multimillionaire. The 17-year-old kid is charged. Now, what I would like to see happen now that he has been charged, let him visit the morgue a couple of times. Every time there is a crash and where somebody ends up dying, have him go with the coroner to the scene and see what happens from start to finish, from the crime scene to the autopsy. Do that three or four times. The dad should pay a restitution to the family. It's not going to bring full closure but a little comfort money won't hurt, okay? That's in my opinion. Again, I'm not saying that the district attorney listens to this podcast show. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying I tossed it up in the air. Somebody grabbed it, or it was in, It was on the plate anyways. It was on his plate anyways. I just happened to say it out loud before he got all the facts in so that way they can do the formal charging. Congratulations. The district attorney did what he's supposed to do. Now, if we can nail this sucker home and make an example of what's going on here, I'm not saying you have to throw the book at him forever and throw him in jail, but I'm saying make an example of him and let people know, hey, how consequential that this is that you end up killing somebody. You got to pay your restitution. You got to be held accountable for your actions. It's simple as that. All right. So we got a lot of crazy stories going on today. That was kind of what I was following, I guess I should say, in the last or last couple eight days. And I would be remiss if I did not mention the fact that this is Distracted Driver Awareness Month. And you know I'm going to harp on this. So I'm going to try to ramp it up a little bit. I'm going to try to get a couple of guests this month if I can, maybe one or two. Uh, somewhere along the line, I might have to do a couple of extra shows uh, but we'll see what happens. Uh, I have been working on my videos for the last couple of weeks, so I'm hoping to actually start putting those out on my YouTube channel. I keep saying I'm going to do that. Uh, matter of fact, I gave a date of like, what, April 1st or something like that, or a little before that. I apologize. That is my fault. Uh, tied up with my other work. Uh, worked a couple good 12, 14, 15-hour days. For the last couple of weeks, it just kind of burned me out. Uh, I did happen to go out and get my uh, uh, first COVID shot. Uh, matter of fact, that was on April 2nd. So that Saturday, I was totally wiped out from one either one the COVID shot uh, or plus I was working. I worked like I think like uh, almost like 14, 15 hours that day. So and I did a couple of days before that as well. So I was a little maxed out a little bit. I just, my body just kind of shut down a little bit. Uh, every now and then I have a little bit of a cough and stuff. I'm fine. I'm good to go. I'm just, you know, I, I'm just trying, I got too much on my plate, as they say. And I got to, you know, put things in perspective. What needs to be done? What can I do? What has to happen? I just got too many things on my plate and I apologize for that. Although I do have always, I do always have time and I'm going to always make time for something like this. And now it's time for the top story from the previous show. Well, the top story from the previous show, uh, what, eight days ago, come from ABC Action News down there in Florida. And if you happen to remember, that was dealing with all of the well, wrong way drunk drivers down in Florida during spring break. Again, from ABC Action News, and I appreciate them for allowing me to use the sound. 
And now to a dangerous trend, putting drivers and first responders at risk on Tampa Bay roads. Police say drunk, wrong-way drivers caused both of these crashes that you see behind me. ABC Action News reporter Ryan Smith breaks down what's being done to keep you safe. Several people called 911 to report a wrong-way driver here on the Courtney Campbell Causeway. Clearwater police tell me that driver was drunk, sparking a chain reaction of violent crashes. Clearwater police arresting a trio of accused drunk drivers Friday on the Courtney Campbell Causeway. Police say Maria Perdamo slammed into a parked police SUV. Turns out that officer was investigating the initial DUI crash. I talked with two different sergeants who were responding to the scene out there, and each of them relayed that in the back of their mind, all they could think about during even that short window was the tragic accident in Tampa that took the life of the patrol officer over there. Tampa police say officer Jesse Matson was killed Tuesday morning when he veered into the path of a drunk wrong way driver going 100 miles an hour. Do not get on the street and be a weapon. It's like a loaded gun. Data from the Florida Highway Patrol shows the Tampa Bay area had the highest number of DUI and drug arrests during the holiday season. 57% more than the next area. I'm paranoid for my own family to be on these streets because, be, to be honest with you, since the pandemic, things have gotten worse. Spring break signals busier roads and parties in Tampa Bay. Law enforcement ready to crack down on impaired driving. This is 100% preventable. It really is, and people just don't get that. Both Clearwater Police and the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office say drivers should expect more enforcement heading into next week. Over in Pinellas County, the Sheriff's Office tells me there is no additional enforcement scheduled at this time. In Tampa, Ryan Smith, ABC Action News. That was the top story from the previous show. All right, that's the top story from the previous show, uh, again, from ABC Action News down there in Florida, and I appreciate them for uh, allowing me to use the sound. But as you heard what the uh, patrol officer indicated, she's paranoid about it, having her own family out there on the freeways. Don't use this stuff as a weapon. Also, you know, it has been people driving 100 miles an hour plus, wrong way, drunk. It's not going to make a pretty, pretty scene, and as you can tell. All right, well, let's talk about something that will, you know, kind of re basically reminds me of the same. Something that will cause you to freak out if you're a motorcycle rider. When I come back, a story from San Diego, how a motorcycle rider had a crash but still lived through it. We'll be back right after this. You're listening to the DistractedDrivers.com podcast. We'll be right back. Wake up and text. Text and eat. Mm -hmm. Text and meet up with a friend you haven't seen in forever. Hi. Oh, hey. Text and complain that they're on their phone the whole time. Uh. Text and listen to them complain that you're on your phone the whole time. Uh. Text and whatever. But when you get behind the wheel, give your phone to a passenger. Put it in the glove box. Just don't text and drive. Visit StopTextsStopRex.org. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. Papa, why can't we telegraph while riding a horse? Son, there ain't no one to blame but Jeffro. He was riding old Betsy the Stallion, tip-tapping away at his telegraph, when blam, ran right into the side of the saloon. Well, if Jeffro can't do it, neither should you. Don't text and drive. Visit StopTextStopRex.org. A message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. Neil Armstrong waited six hours and 39 minutes to step onto the surface of the moon. Jackie Robinson waited 20 months to play his first game with the Brooklyn Dodgers. And even DiCaprio had to wait 22 years to win an Oscar. You can wait until your destination. Don't text and drive. Visit StopTextStopRex.org. A message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. Now, 
back to the DistractedDrivers.com podcast. All right, welcome back to DistractedDriversBusted.com podcast show. I'm your host, Howard Drescher, the creator of DistractedDriversBusted.com. And, of course, now this podcast show, and you can follow me on Twitter, at DistractedDBTV, at DistractedDBTV, and, of course, on Facebook, it's DistractedDB, iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Google Podcasts. That's where you can find me. Just type in a keyword, DistractedDB, you'll get all my archive shows. All right, so let's just jump into it. To me, this is kind of a sensitive type story because once I used to ride a motorcycle, I no longer can now because of some lady just sideswiped me back in 2010, 2011. And so from that point on, I decided I can no longer put my life at risk because of somebody else's negligence. So therefore, here's a story that I got from CBS 8 out there in San Diego. Now, A motorcycle rider riding his motorcycle going down the freeway, minding his own business, and then all of a sudden, he sees a car tire bouncing his way. Now, how did that tire, did it come off of the vehicle? Oh, no, no, no. There's much more to this story. Again, this story comes from CBS 8 out there in San Diego, and I appreciate them for allowing me to use the sound. A terrifying crash caught on camera as a San Ysidro man tells News 8 he survived what police are calling a malicious prank. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Alicia Summers. And I'm Steve Price. The man was riding his motorcycle on a local freeway when witnesses say someone rolled a tire into traffic, causing the man to crash his bike. News 8's LaMonica Peter spoke with that man who incredibly walked away without any major injuries. Imagine riding down the freeway on your motorcycle and a tire comes out of nowhere and knocks you off your bike. Well, that actually happened to one man while he was on the 5 freeway just before the 15 North, and now he's speaking out about the scary incident. I don't know where this tire came out, and it was too quick to react. Servando Lopez says he's lucky to be alive after crashing his motorcycle while heading home just before noon on Tuesday. He says eyewitnesses told him what they saw. Two guys that stopped to help me told me that they saw somebody on the hill next to the freeway roll down the tire. A guy in a light gray shirt. I I didn't see him, though, and I didn't see him in my video. Lopez actually caught his crash on a video recorder attached to his helmet. He says he wasn't seriously hurt, but he had to think fast after falling. My first thought was, I got to get up. I got to get up. I got to get off of the freeway because I don't know what's going on behind me. There could be cars speeding. They could run me over. Fortunately, he says the cars did stop for him and the two witnesses helped him get off the freeway. Lopez says he went to urgent care to be examined and had his motorcycle turned home. Now he just wants motorcyclists to be on the lookout and to remember this important tip. I think the biggest takeaway from this is for motorcyclists to wear their gear because I hit the ground pretty hard. And you can see my helmet is scratched up, my jacket is scratched up. But if I hadn't been wearing that, I would have been in way worse condition. Lopez says CHP did arrive on the scene and search for the guy witnesses saw on the hill, but they didn't find him. He also told me that he's been riding a motorcycle for six years and he does plan to buy another one. But for now, he's gonna take a little break from riding bikes. All right, and that story came from CBS 8 out here in San Diego, and I appreciate them for allowing me to use the sound. Now, there's two things in this story that I felt in my own crash. One is that I, like him, thought about just getting up, getting up, because you don't know the vehicles coming behind you are going to go ahead and hit you? Are they going to stop? Will you get cracked in the head? Will they hit you head on? And your mind just wanders like really fast. Everything is in slow motion, but it seems like it's going really, really fast. I experienced that myself. And to me, that was the most terrifying situation. Uh, The second is he talked about that we're the good gear. Wear the gear. Now, I wore the gear myself. Luckily, that's what also helped save my life. 
Or, you know, God was up there saying, hey, it's not your time. So if that's the case, I take that as a sign. You should always wear your gear. And if you end up crashing, you want to get to your feet as fast as you can to see what's going on. Even though that you go as fast as you can, it's like in slow motion. It's like in the movies. It's like when those crashes in the movies and you see the people are running and and they're like going fast as they can, but the motion is all like, ooh. It's in slow motion, okay? That was my slow motion sound. Okay, but that's how it is. And quite honestly, to tell you the truth, that is the most scariest thing there is when it comes to this kind of stuff. All right, when we come back, when we come back, this is about the third or fourth tow truck death that I'm going to cover this year. We'll be back right after this. You're listening to the DistractedDrivers.com podcast. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived in Philadelphia. Local time is 3.05 p.m. and the temperature is 67 degrees. At this time, you are now free to use your cellular devices. You know that feeling when you get to turn your phone on after the plane lands? You can have that feeling every time you drive. Make sure your cell phone is stowed away whenever you are behind the wheel. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, a message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. Wake up and text. Text and eat. Mm -mm. Text and catch the bus. Text and miss your stop. Wait, 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 wait. Text and be late to work. Sorry, I'm late. Text and work. Text and pretend to work. Text and act surprised when someone calls you out for not working. Who, me? Text and meet up with a friend you haven't seen in forever. Hi. Oh, hey. Text and complain that they're on their phone the whole time. Uh. Text and listen to them complain that you're on your phone the whole time. Uh. Text and whatever. But when you get behind the wheel, give your phone to a passenger. Put it in the glove box. Just don't text and drive. Visit StopTextsStopRex.org. A public service announcement brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Now, back to the DistractedDrivers.com podcast. All right, welcome back to DistractedDriversBusted.com podcast show. Thank you for listening to my podcast show. Thank you for allowing me to entertain you or at least give you some news along the way in the world of driving and, well, basically trying to help you keep alive behind the wheel. All right, again, I'm your host, Howard Drescher, the creator of DistractedDriversBusted.com, the podcast show. And, of course, on Twitter, it's DistractedDB. You can get the show on iTunes, Spotify, iHeart. Uh-oh. You can get the show on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Google Podcasts. I'm not going to edit that thing out. I like that. Uh, at least one mistake every show, I think, <laughs> since, uh, uh, I don't know, it's just crazy. I try to do this mistake free, but I'm just going to be me, and if I make a mistake, so be it. I mean, I'm human. I'm not going to, like I've told you before in the past, I'm not going to clean up my show. Okay, so here's a story about a tow truck driver up in a Sacramento area, and this story comes from CBS 13, and I appreciate them for allowing me to use the sound. But this is like the second or third story that I have talked about this year where a tow truck driver was killed while he was doing his job. He had his hazard lights on, parked on the side of the road. Now, how intoxicated do you have to be in order to crash into him? That's one. So let's just roll on that because I got a hot story coming up next. Again, ABC 13, I appreciate them for allowing me to use the sound. Tonight, a suspected drunk driver is in jail, accused in the death of a tow truck driver called out for a job on I-5. This happened along the freeway near Seamus Avenue. CBS 13's Ryan Hill is live in South Sacramento with this tragedy. Ryan? Yeah, that's right. CHP South, South Sacramento says that that tow truck driver was outside of his car with his hazard lights on, trying to help out somebody who was just in need of a tow. 
They also say that a van was heading up the highway and then hit the driver and his truck and throwing him onto the highway. The busy lanes of I-5 northbound in South Sacramento shut down as highway patrol investigates the death of a tow truck driver who is hit and killed while on the job. The Sacramento County coroner identifying 40-year-old Obina Uguri as the name of the tow truck driver that was killed. A van hit Uguri outside of his truck while he was outside of it on a tow on the highway's shoulder north of Seamus Avenue. It's such a tragedy. Highway Patrol says this man, Larry Godbold, was behind the wheel of the van at the time. He was arrested on a DUI and gross vehicular manslaughter charge. He stayed at the scene but didn't provide a statement to investigators. A tragedy on the highway, a man doing his job, giving someone in need a tow. The motoring public needs to be educated. We're out there performing a service for them. They need to slow down and move over. The president of the California Tow Truck Association tells me that every six days they lose an operator. That's pretty sad. That's pretty sad. And again, this story came from ABC 13. And this is like a third or fourth one that I've talked about. It, it seems to just run its course, usually like three or four at a time. But I know I've talked about it and they do have to slow down. They have to slow down and they have to pay attention. Now, the next story I got is also from ABC 13, Upper in Sacramento. I think I need to have a new feature. It's called like the jackass of the week or the moron of the day. But in this case, it's two parents that went to Taco Bell and you're not going to believe what happened. And the worst thing about this is they had a young child in the back of the car. Now, it's a drive through DUI, drive through DUI. Here's a story from ABC 13 that will clear up the information, but these guys are the jackass of the week. New tonight, passed out in the Taco Bell drive through a kid in the back seat. Tonight, a couple is cuffed in Yolo County, and police say they were under the influence. CBS 13's Valina Jones is live in Winters with more on the drive through DUI. Valina. Yeah, the couple sat in their car for around 10 minutes asleep. They were there so long, an employee here at Taco Bell had to call police just to wake them up. It pisses me off. Oh, there's no excuse for that. That anger directed at a couple captured in this photo passed out in the drive through line at a Taco Bell in Winters with a four-year-old in the back seat. You don't ever put your kids' lives in danger like that. Police found the driver, 33-year-old Monica Cook, holding an open bottle of tequila with 34-year-old Thomas Oliver unconscious beside her. Officers had to wake them up to put them in handcuffs. For you to be blessed with the child and be an irresponsible parent, I mean, you have no rights to even be a parent. The drive through danger appalling mother of six, Priscilla Perez, who has a daughter the same age. There could have been a car accident. They wouldn't even be here right now. What if all three of them would have lost their lives? Officers found the child asleep in the back seat without a seat belt. Both Cook and Oliver are now facing several charges, including child endangerment. They should lose them because, I mean, if you can pass out waiting in line for some food, they got to get some serious help. 1528 at the window, thank you. Protective parents thinking of their own kids hope this is the wake-up call the couple needs. They should not go easy on the parents. This is not to be tolerated. This is not acceptable. Now, Cook is also facing DUR, DUI charges. Cook and Oliver were both booked in Yolo County Jail and released. Police are not releasing any information on who's now taking care of that child. Again, this story came from ABC 13 up in Sacramento, and I applaud. I applaud. I'm applauding each and every one of these people that were out there saying it pisses me off. They shouldn't do it. Don't get it. Uh, don't give them um, the uh, easy treatment. Max them out. It's a blessing to have a child. All that. I agree with each and every one of those statements. And again, yet you're going to find somebody who's a bleeding heart liberal that's going to try to help them out. Again, you're listening to DistractedDriversBusted.com, the podcast show. Don't be... A drive through DUI. Don't do it. Don't do it. Also, remember, I don't want to die today. Do you?
Take your cell phone and put it in a glove box. Until next week, we'll be set. Ooh, hope you're safe. Hope you're safe. And please, don't be a Taco Bell drive-thru DUI. Don't do it. <laughs>